Hi guys, just going to do another paper aeroplane from the complete book of paper aeroplanes by David Woodruff that cost me £1.25 in a charity shop. If you want the book, if you have a look in the video description, there's actually an affiliate link that will generate a few pennies for me if you buy it off Amazon. Um, if you have a look on Amazon, you'll probably find some second-hand ones cheap because this one was originally £12.99. Obviously I didn't pay that for it. So you don't have to pay the full amount of money for it. Normally I rip... Uh, no, I don't rip the page out. Normally if you bought the book, you'd rip the page out and fold it. Following those instructions. But then if you rip that page out, you take away the instructions for the next page. So you could start from the back and work forwards, that means you'd always have the instructions. Or you could photocopy it. Or you could do what I normally do, which is measure it. And if I measure it in centimetres, and then transfer it to a piece of A4 paper, one centimetre on there, if I use half an inch on there, it works out right. But today, as you can see I've already started, I'm going to trace it instead. So I've made the markings on it and I'm just drawing them in. And the reason they're already there, I'm part way through this, is the camera failed on me the first time through. And rather than start all over again, I'm carrying on for, from where the camera failed. So that'll make it a bit quicker. If this particular aircraft looks familiar, that's because I've actually done several of similar ones already. And there's another one. There's another one. They seem to quite like that design in here. And they just sort of change the colour scheme a bit and it looks different. But it's a similar aircraft each time. Uh, actually if I cut that then I can put there's a few lines I haven't put on there yet because I can't quite see them clearly enough through the paper. Because they're dark lines or dotted lines on a dark background. Cut this out, that'll make it a little bit easier. In the good old days, before you had photocopiers, this is the way you'd have done it. You'd have traced it. Although you'd probably have used wax tracing paper. I remember using that all, these, all those years ago. could see through it easily to copy things. Normally when I transfer this to a piece of A4 paper it ends up a little bit bigger. When I'm just doing it this way it'll be a straight match for the original.
I don't like these designs because they haven't got a proper fuselage or body to get hold of. Well, actually, having said that, this one does. A lot of them you have to hold by the tail and throw, but this one, yeah, this one does have one. Oh, I take that back. We'll find out in a minute. Let's see if it actually works the way I like it. Right, let's follow the instructions. So we fold this in. Okay, or is that one more time? That is one more time, isn't it? Okay, there we go. So let's put all the weight at the front, fold it. So those are equal. Down again on that line. Oh, a bit. A bit thick at the front there for folding. That's our buzzard glider. Let's see if it flies now. Take off tip. If necessary, curve up the rear edges of the wings and tail between thumb and finger to achieve a smooth glide. That means like that. All right, we'll see what happens. I just gave it a little test flight straight away and that was hopelessly tail heavy. I'm going to have to add some weight at the front I think.
There we go, guys. Buzzard Glider. Um, what do I think of it? I think it would fly better in a bigger area. Because I'm having trouble trimming it down to fly up and down the kitchen in a straight line. I've had to add a lot of nose weight to it. It was terribly tail heavy. Not quite sure why, but it was. I could probably put an extra fold in the front to actually add some extra weight. But uh, So it tended to fly up, do this sort of thing. Uh, the extra weight cured that up to a point. It looks like it's got potential. I think that's the best way to put it. I couldn't get the best out of it. I think outdoors it'd probably do all right. But where I tried to get it to go in a straight line and hit the camera, it struggled, or I struggled to get it to do that. So, that'll do. Thanks for watching. You'll find more information down in the video description. You might like to watch that video up there and you might like subscribe over there.